This guy is one of my favorite devs at the moment. He has done a lot of the heavy lifting, porting the software Pierre has been writing over to my favorite distro. This set me down a path to get OpenSUSE running on the Libram 5, and in the end has created a simple way to run lots of different distributions. Big thanks to Crafty Guy and Sebastian, who helped me work out a lot of the show-stopping bugs. <laughs> I didn't start this project to be able to run Arch or Debian or any other distribution other than SUSE, so I tried starting out with Kiwi, which is one of the most powerful distro building tools out there. But since setting up an ARM64 environment on OpenSUSE was proving harder than it should be, I went with a much more hackerish approach. Grab the latest PureOS image, gut it, and replace most of its parts with the root file system of some other distro. By hand, this process looks a lot cooler, but this handy script I slapped together does that job nicely. Copy your ARM64 file system into this directory, Copy the latest Libram 5 image into this directory and run the build script. This copies the Libram 5 image, mounts it, backs up the FS tab and kernel modules, deletes everything else, then copies the root file system from the other distro, runs a small bug fix, and then unmounts everything. In the end, this is a simple way to mess around with any distro that builds for ARM on the Libram 5. Mobian runs fairly well. The root file system is out of storage, which is causing a bug with the display brightness continually darkening. Without disk space, we cannot edit any user settings. The fix for this is running resize2fs on the root file system. With that done, we can now edit the user settings and reboot the device safely. It comes with a few games, 2048, which works perfectly. And you can also play a bit of chess. File seems to work very well. But the text is a bit hard to read at this scale. Firefox comes pre-configured to work out of the box on Wayland. This does a good job web browsing on this image. You can connect to 4G, but it seems like that might have some routing issues, preventing it from actually working right. Don't push the power button. If you do, the whole screen locks up and you have to reboot. Text messages work, and you can make phone calls, but the speaker and microphone don't work, so you can't say much past... The default lineup seems to work for the most part. All in all, not a bad image on the Libram 5. Arch Linux boots. I don't really know if this version came with a GUI or if that part's broken. I might play with this a bit on the dev kit to see if I can get some console access. Nemo also boots. It leaves you with this nice looking screen, but it is rather broken at the moment. OpenSUSE takes a minute or two to boot, but the OS works well. Wi-Fi is broken, but booting this on the dev kit gives you access to an RJ45 port, which works out of the box. Just like Mobian, we had a lot of user settings to mess around with. The 4G connection dialog was not what I was expecting, and it didn't seem to work. The terminal font is a bit ugly, and the home directory is a bit bare. Pressing the power button doesn't seem to do anything. I can't wait for this to follow in the footsteps of PureOS. Plasma Mobile, Memo, Ubuntu Touch, and Fedora all ended up with this screen. A workaround for this could likely be found with a bit of effort. The fact that any of this works at all is a testament to how robust and interchangeable the software and hardware Purism is building. I'm happy with OpenSUSE starting to work. If you feel up to porting to the Libram 5, I encourage you to take a look at this project and chat with people on the Matrix channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.